Hey guys, welcome to the shop. So on today's episode of Moose's Machinery, we're gonna go and cover five tips to get better at machining. Uh, the number one tip, and I think this is the most important thing, and it applies to a lot of different aspects of your life, is you gotta go out there and make something. Uh, you're never going to get better if you don't try. So I wanna show you the first thing I ever made on a milling machine, and it, is this abysmal looking hold down nothing matches inside um it's just a wreck but it holds parts down and it works so this really segues into our second point which is embrace your mistakes i can do a lot better than this now um i've gotten a lot better and on the same machine i can make much more complex parts now so because I embraced my mistakes and didn't let myself get discouraged, I can make, you know, better parts with a nicer surface finish. So this is another hold down. Uh, this one's specifically to use a grinding vise on my mill. But you see, we're getting into more complex geometries. Uh, you know, we've got through holes here. We've got a nice surface finish here, even a pretty decent surface finish. Um, we've got a little bit of an apprentice mark right here, but nothing really to worry about and it works. So one of the things is you can't let yourself get discouraged, but you've also got to set realistic expectations for what you can do. That's, that's my tip number three is set realistic expectations. Um, and I'm going to show you some burnt up tools at the end and how you can repurpose your burnt up tools because you've really just got to find enjoyment in the process where you you have to find enjoyment in making the part not just having the part otherwise you know breaking a 30 or 40 dollar end mill however much this was this is solid carbide you know this is high speed steel i pretended it was carbide and ran too quick so we burnt the end right off um i don't even know what happened to this one but i found it in my drawer i don't think i've ever used it you know another one I was trying to mill at 5160 that I had sharpied down as 1018 mild. Uh, 5160 is pretty tough, chewy alloy steel. It's harder to machine than 4140. But you know, you gotta run what you brung. Uh, it's a lot of this process is just taking time and learning your machines and learning what they can do. So we have a selection of stuff here and we're just gonna go through it. This is a repurposed broken file I turned into a, ch a wood chisel. This is really good for, you know, pairing and just, and I use it all the time, but it's a piece of broken hammer handle and a broken file. You know, repurpose your broken stuff. And this is a broken 5 16 carbide end mill. This is what's called a tangential tool holder. So it sits in the lathe tool, tool holder like this. And it's a really nice finished tool. This, this does a fantastic job on cast iron. And that's a use for broken end mills like this, where a broken tool has not ended its life. It's just started a new chapter. And that, you know, it, all of these points tie together. They're just, you know, accept the process, embrace the process, find enjoyment in it. Where this is a chunk of mild steel. This is a staking tool um, for a Remington 1100, 870, that platform. It's really common. There's a shell latch that's on each side that's staked into the receiver and they come loose over time. They can fall out. So this is just a really quick tool made with layout lines and, you know, ground a little bit. So we have a pretty quick and dirty staking tool. It's not beautiful, but it works. And again, set realistic expectations. Does this tool need to be beautiful to work? No. And if you're getting started, you know, you're going to have a lot of stuff that looks like this. You're not going to be making, you know, super complex parts. Like this is a really good beginner's tool, which is a tap guide where we have a series of holes. And you see, I made this recently um, because I needed it. I forgot to put a hole in series. So I just went back and popped it on the end. Not a big deal. You know, mistakes happen. And this is a handy little tool. This, I think, would be a really fun beginner's project. You make these out of mild steel, 
And how you make this is I just square the top and you drill all your holes and mill down. I like to mill, I think this was like a 3 16 end mill down the center. Um, so you're not cutting on the point of whatever 90 degree tool you're using, or you could tip this on 90 degrees and do it that way or flip the head on your mill. I just have a 90 degree tool, so that makes it easier. But a two flute 90 degree tool isn't gonna ever get a great surface finish. So you've gotta be um, realistic with that. You're not gonna get a ground looking finish. And another really realistic, fun, get started hobby project is actually, this is a machined hammer out of a block of 4140. So I, I machine the eye and I machine this and I ground it. And it's a really good project to teach you how to make chamfers. Uh, Cause you get chamfers, you have to chamfer the face. That's a good realistic project. You're gonna make mistakes. You'll have to embrace that part of the process. You know, you're going out and making something. You know, I think this is realistic for a first project on a milling machine. Uh, if you take your time, I think this was one of my second machine projects. I want to say I broke three tools on this and, you know, obviously you run what you brung, you're using whatever machine you own. And like the number, number one thing is just go out and make something. And as you get better and get practice, you can make more and more complex parts. Um, this has a pretty precise ratio of the center line of this post here with the front of this radius. This involves cutting a radius on a uh, rotary table. Ooh, sorry, I kicked the camera, guys. And, you know, we need a good surface finish for a running fit here. You have to have a precisely bored or reamed fit so that this, um, I don't even know what to call it. This basically locking block can slide up and down freely when it's loosened, but it's also doesn't require a lot of um, clamping action. And you need a pretty precise length between the front of this locking block and the post. So this face here and the center line here is a close relationship. It's a simple looking part on paper, but you know, it, there's a lot going on. It, it's not a lot of setups, but everything has to be done well. And it's a good single point threading project, but you can also see here, I misread the DRO and I think I was offset by 500 thousandths of an inch here. So embrace your mistakes. I plugged this and just drilled and tapped and started over. And it's a perfectly functional tool unless I flip it over, no one will ever know. So this hobby or career is really all about finding enjoyment in the process because it gets really frustrating if you expect everything to go right and nothing goes right in the shop, at least this one. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this inspires some of you to get out there and make something. And if you really enjoy this style of content and information on the industry, you know, from a small shop owner's perspective, please subscribe. I try to upload two to three videos a week.